What is good? We're back. The NFL draft has concluded, and now we have quite the mess to sort out. You know? It's, it's a little early to jump back on here and say, hey, I've got it figured out, but we're going to do it. We know you want it. We want it. So we're going to do it. We're, there'll be mock drafts to come. There'll be plenty of diagnosis and breaking down of what's going on. We're going to have different guests on here sorted out, but for now, you're going to get a tripod. Uh, coming at you from Charleston, South Carolina. We're going to go over receivers. Then we're going to go over some running backs. Then we'll probably hit some quarterbacks. We have time tight ends. Who knows? I don't know how much time we're going to have. Right. Going to go to Bed Bath & Beyond. I got my guy Jay Wayne on the ones and twos. All your video editing pleasure. And I got our, our new guy on the right of me, Matt Move Mormon. Old. He's old but new. Fat Mormon. On the Twitter. Hola. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get into this and and see who kind of jumped around in some tears and and who went where and all that kind of stuff. Just a, just a general kind of reaction if there was any movement uh, and how draft capital plays the part. Uh, but before we get rolling here, no we have, brew dog. We Sorry. have a uh, we have a live draft going on right now with the UDPL. Um, and I just wanted to quickly rattle off who's gone in this draft to give you a real life uh, money league. Uh, these are guys in the industry. It's Dynasty Trade Calculator, Dynasty Happy Hour, Open Bar Guys, Dynasty Nerds, um, NBC Ed, Sports Edge, the Dynasty Fantasy Nerds, Authority. multiple Dynasty Nerds. Um, and who else did I miss We're here? Missing somebody. Rotobon, uh, Pete Davidson, um, and uh, lots of. Uh, uh, Garrett, the other half of the open bar, J. Mike, Gabe, shout right. out. Hit that one already. So a dynasty war zone in Memphis and, mm. and his crew. So uh, so far we had the one one. We had we took Brees Hall, then the one two came out. We tried to trade back uh, we whatever we could up, but Izzy from the DTC was he was he said he didn't care, so he didn't want to really move. So he he took Kenneth Walker, then Drake London. Um, that was. Then Garrett Wilson. Then we took Traylon Burks. Then uh, Tyler traded back in at 1-6 for Judy and a second in 2024 to take Kenny Pickett. Um, and now we are in the process of trying to trade for 1-7 as we speak to take Jamison Williams here. It is a it is a start three wide receiver league. Uh, so, you know, an important set around that somewhat. Uh, is which, that quarter point per carry by chance? It is not. Really? Okay. It is not. Okay. Um, so they did add another flex. So right. now you could you could start four running backs, but up until this point, you, you could only start three, which is well, and you would have to flex the third one. Right. Right. So uh, that's just a live draft. That's how that one's kicked off. Assuming that's super flex as well. And it, it is, is super, super flex, so right? Yeah. And also, yeah. also a super flex and tight end premium, but we yeah. haven't gotten that far yet. I was assuming when Pickett went one of six, that was super flex. Right. Um, so that's kind of where that's out on on a live uh, rounds kind of draft or live bullets for your rounds uh draft it could be confusing tea leaves are on them all right let's start on the wide receiver side of things and we'll just go kind of through who was drafted and at the highest and and we'll we'll run through it so drake london uh goes to atlanta one eight probably doesn't really move all that much for me it was already up near the top i had a, a three a trifecta on the top three he was in it um so it doesn't really affect me all that much i I do like the landing spot seems like wide open for for plenty of targets for sure for sure yeah thoughts for anybody else before we keep it moving i didn't see them taking drake but i can't be mad at it i'm 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 with these in the top three wide receivers for me i don't he'd be the first one off the board for you guys i don't think so i don't think not for me okay well we'll get to it then all right so garrett wilson then goes next uh, he's at one one ten in the real draft. The Jets finally brought in a high profile wide receiver. They can't say no in the draft. The, the they can't J- turn down the offer. In the draft. The Jets are in there, so they've got they've got a you know a, a, a crowded room. We said pre draft that we'd be a little bummed for Elijah Moore stock, which yeah, I think you got to be slightly bummed because you're not sure if Zach Wilson can facilitate this quite yet. Yeah, uh, if he can, sure. it'll be great. Uh, that's that's that looks like a lot of fun on paper. We we would think that we're going to slide uh, more into the slot a little bit more when Garrett Wilson uh, taking some of those outside reps. Is is he your number one? Did he move for you at all? Was he? What do you guys think? No, he's still. He was always kind of top 
four ish for me, and he's just kind of stayed there. Okay. I probably had him at the top yeah. pre draft. Yeah. Thank goodness I never had to make that decision because I'm not in a dumb league that would draft before the NFL draft. I am <laughs> in some dumb leagues that are drafting right now, but um, shout out to the UDPL. But I do think it does. I mean, I can't be that excited about a Jets landing spot. I can't move him out of the top three, but I don't have to take him at, at the top spot, I don't think. I can't do it. Yeah. I just okay. doesn't feel great, right? What about you? you um, I don't hate it if you take him there, though. It's just not. It's just not. I'm not gonna argue. Yeah, I love the talent, love the player. I'm not gonna be mad at putting that caliber of player on my team, regardless of who he plays for, or who's throwing it to him. But when we're talking about your top guys, your top favorite guy, I can't put him at the very top of the wide receiver list. Uh, Near the top, not at anymore. the top. Right. I had a I had a, a top three of of London Wilson Burks kind of as a tier, and that's pretty much how it stands. I could I could flip a coin. I've I've probably have flip flopped on. Those guys, even in the last couple of days since the draft has happened, like, oh, yeah, 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 you know what? I really like this guy or I really like that guy. It was, It's probably been Drake consistently at the top, I guess, for me. Um, but I also did really like Drake coming in, and I like that there's – obviously, we got Mariota, and then we're going to probably transition to Ritter, or maybe it'll always be Ritter. Um, but, you know, it seems like him him and Pitts are, are the future here. Yeah, and, what, um, and whatever happens with Cooper – or uh, Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, Calvin Ridley, yeah. Right. What the hell am I talking about? So It's late. Alabama guy. I mean, fair. I, you could say the same for, for Garrett Wilson and and, and Zach Wilson. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess we're kind of saying you trust Mariota and, and Ritter more than you trust Zach Wilson. I, I don't know. Uh, but there is a little bit more going on in New York than there is in Atlanta. Now that, of course, they brought in Brees Hall as well. Yeah. Um, and are still have Corey Davis and, and drafted – some tight ends and have some tight ends that they brought in this year. So a little stiffer competition where it seems wide open a little bit more for Atlanta and probably going to be, well, Jets might be behind too, but you're, we're going to assume that Atlanta could be in this position, probably are more projected to be in the position of being a top draft pick next year. than maybe the Jets could actually maybe have earned the, the 10 spot or the 12 spot next year, possibly. Yeah. yeah I think, I think we Atlanta's a top eight draft pick next year pretty, right pretty pretty easily so maybe Ritter isn't even they drafted him because he fell super late maybe he is the guy and they like him or maybe they find themselves at one 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 two next year and could possibly land a Stroud or a, or a Bryce Young Bryce Young yeah I think I, th- I think that is more in the realm of possibility for me for Atlanta but I think there's gonna be a bunch of teams yeah who don't have a great quarterback situation going into 2023 and there could be I think there could be Something we saw with like uh, Wentz and uh, Goff when teams traded up, right? Next because, year, yeah, 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 yeah. The Jags are really bummed that wasn't the case this year because they had to take the number one pick. Yeah, same with probably the Lions, but well, the Lions would have just taken the quarterback if they had a chance. Probably, hey, but. you gotta love that they didn't take anyone. That says something for Jared Goff. Yeah, sure. Says something about this, this class. I think. I think for sure. Yeah. I think especially for with Goff and even for Davis Mills as well too that neither of them got any real competition. Right. It was it was nice to see them not force it. The whole I, NFL is a general. I, I think the fact that that the Lions had maybe some other chances to take a shot on one of those quarterbacks that they maybe passed on in the first round and still didn't is probably more decent uh, indicative yeah, of Goff. Right, right. We'll get to the quarterback. So, uh Chris Olave goes next. Um Probably not a ton changes for me. I had him uh, probably about six receivers down um, from the top, and he probably stays about where he was. Although, I mean, you could. I don't love the Saints. The Saints seem to kind of be trending in the wrong direction a little bit. We don't know what to make of of the defensive coordinator taking over as the head coach. We don't know what Alvin Kamara is going to be there. We don't. We haven't seen Michael Thomas in a while, uh, but. The problem of Jameis of uh, Jameis Winston isn't, you know, production for skill position players. It's wins losses doing boneheaded things. Yeah. Um, but I don't care that much from a right. fantasy perspective. You don't care from the fantasy perspective Not is kind of what I'm getting at with Olave. Bit. So, uh, you know, originally I was like, I don't love that New Orleans made so many moves to get up there and take Olave necessarily. Um, but, you know, he it's, it seems pretty favorable as, as a landing spot as far as you know what we've seen on this board kind of unfold 
Yeah, like you for could sure. get two years of Winston, or and maybe they draft somebody else and figure it out and go in a different direction. But he should be fine. Should be able to take the top off of Thomas. Can be that kind of intermediate, uh, short route kind of guy. And Olave can can kind of do his thing. Uh, and and James can get it there. I mean, yeah, he'll take the shot. I think that I think New Orleans wants Olave to be what they were hoping Drake on Drakeon Smith could be. Yeah, which you got a whole lot better chance uh, of, yeah. of Olave panning out. Probably going to be a pretty solid pro. Moved up a lot higher to take Olave than yeah, of well, course, sure. yeah, yeah. So thoughts on Olave? I think he stays. I think he moves up a little bit for me, but not a whole lot. I think he moves into another a different tier rather than moving up a whole lot of spots. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, Joey? I don't think I can move him up any further than I already had him. You know. Right. I mean, I guess there's a discussion to be had with. We'll, we'll pickings, but we'll get there. We'll piece that together after we get down a certain amount of guys here about yeah. piece and tears together here. So let's just keep it rolling. Jamison Williams to Detroit. Some people have him. They love the landing spot and have him locked in as, as WR1, um, which I can't really necessarily make it a strong argument against that. Um, he could definitely be the best wide receiver out of this draft. I'm just not really sure why all of a sudden the love for Detroit. I mean, I guess you're, you're – uh, projecting that maybe there'll be a different quarterback in a year or so. But I, I think Detroit's going to be one of those teams that probably isn't picking in the top 10 next year. I think they have a real good chance of, of kind of turning it around a little bit and not being the same old Lions. Got, and yeah. Probably not being a playoff team, but, you know. That would be a big jump, I mean, to go from picking two to not being to be in the top 10. To being able to win six games. You yeah, know? but what does six games get you? Like Pr- probably the middle of the path. What I'm saying is, it's not going to get you. Probably They're not, not going to have you. a guaranteed yes. shot at yeah. one of the top quarterbacks unless they trade. Unless they trade up, it could yeah. be. But I mean, we. I'm not. I feel okay about the Lions moving forward. Yeah, um, I mean, again, golf's I'm good enough. Yeah, exactly. He's. I mean, he makes a couple again. He's kind of like a. He's kind of like a poor man's Jameis, where he's not quite throwing the ball around, but he does. He just makes those bonehead mistakes, right? That kill the team. But he's again. Dumb. Golf will have streaks where you're like, damn, he's playing really well. But and it's, that's a good point. He is sort of like like a little bit like a little Jameis Light where he'll have a stretch where he's he's like, damn, golf. And then it's like, what the fuck were you doing? Yeah. He, he, he just doesn't have the volume. And that's what I think that's the problem in Detroit is he just doesn't have the volume to be able to. How is he going to be able to make three players fantasy relevant? Yeah. I, you're right. And there's a lot of amount. And I mean, he maybe did even with four. McVay, but. Maybe but even four. That was with McVeigh, not with Man yeah. Campbell. You got Hawkinson, Hawk, Swift, Swift. Uh, Jameson, St. Brown. I mean, that's, yeah. that's four guys that people are probably going to be drafting, you know, in the top 50. Maybe St. Brown drops out of that top 50. But, yeah. you know, right now, those guys in the tight end premium are probably all, we're all around top 50 draft picks. For sure. Yeah. Which I think Jameson probably helps. Amon Ra, right? I mean, they're different well, players. And Chark's they're there. different play. I don't care about Chark. They're different players. Chark was insurance in case he didn't get Jameson. Well, I mean, we've seen good stretches from Chark. He, he, he could probably, he might be a little bit of a thorn in the side for that one year deal of, of one of those. Yeah, two guys. he's probably going to be more of a. I think he's going to be more of a deep threat and like stretch the field out so the other two can work more than anything else. Right. And if he's there, I mean, but Goff's a dot was next to nothing last year. And you don't have to bring Jamison around super fast if you don't want to because you do kind of have a, a Chark that can take the top off where Jamison's going to be the guy who eventually is going to be taking the top off as well as doing other things. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Jamison Williams has a lot more rounded game than Chark does. Oh, I mean, for sure. Um, so is J- did Jamison Williams move up at all for anybody? No. I think I had him at, at four right there with, with after the other three top guys, which we haven't gotten to Burks yet, but I he agreed. We just took Burks, who's who's next. No, he's he's two more two more guys until we get to him. I think uh, I mean Jameson was in the discussion, right? But I don't think I don't, I don't think, think I you're can, getting the media production that you're getting with Burks, right? And I'm not even necessarily worried about immediate production because none of these it's top dynasty guys I, I am I trying it. to like just get and then flip, you know? Yeah. Uh, whereas you know someone like. Jerry Judy might might be worth it to get him and flip him at a certain point because if he comes out week one and has two touchdowns, you can almost trade for anybody on the board. You could draft point, right? Sammy Watkins, Green <laughs> <Yeah>. Bay, <laughs> mark it down. Uh, so I, I don't think it moves. I mean, I don't. Like, how could you love the landing spot? I mean, I like what Detroit has going on, and I don't. It's not the worst. You can be indifferent. You don't have to love or hate something. I moved him. But, da- I moved him down in my rankings. I had him at okay. wide receiver two. Oh, okay. So, the de- so there was some movement for you. Now, yeah. yeah. 
Okay. I had him at four. I can't. I don't think I, I can think, move him up or down. I'm right. I'm right there with you for the most part, uh, Jay Wayne. Uh, so the next guy off the board, Dotson. Um, Dotson. We got Dotson here. Jahan Dotson. Um, he goes to Washington. They they do some finagle and they move around uh, a little bit here. Not really sure why. If you're going wide receiver, you don't take Traylon Burks. For me personally, um, but maybe they like Dotson and and NFL teams are maybe uh, drafting more towards a scheme fit rather than what we see. Um, I mean, I just don't understand what they're doing. Every all of their wide receivers are pretty much the same player with Samuel McLaurin and Dotson. They're all smallish receivers and pretty fast. You just have Wentz there, and I mean, you're hoping that Wentz is going to be accurate, and he hasn't been super accurate, so. I'm just I don't understand the fit with Dotson to to Washington. I like the players, it's just a terrible landing spot. How could you be excited about Washington? I was know? down on the player and I'm, the landing spot wasn't great for me, so you're down on the player, which I don't get cuz you probably seen a lot of him. But the thing is I was I was high on him until I went back and watched the tape. I'm being honest with you. I was already I was ready to fight Zach Reed about Dotson and I went back and watched tape and I was like, yeah, I have some concerns here. Yeah, I, I, I well, Penn State did a great job scheming him to get open, and I don't yeah. trust that they're gonna do they're gonna do the same thing in the NFL, especially with those two other players there that are gonna do the exact same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like the player. Beast. Um, I like the player a good bit. I obviously I don't like this landing spot um a ton, but I mean it's kind of just like some of these other guys that we just talked about. I mean. Curtis Samuel, they got an out for Curtis. Not like he's been really even played all that much in Washington, and they have an out for him in 2023. Um, so he could be off the team. Terry McLaurin, I think, is not under contract after this year. So he could not be on the team. They did draft De- Diami Brown last year, but we've we, we've saw very limited amounts yeah. from him. So, you know, in a year with, with you know, they did they took Sam Howell in the fifth round. They kind of already came out and said, hey, we don't, we're, we're kind of calling Carson a bridge to somewhere at some point. Um, so, again, man, we've gone through a bunch of these guys already and it just seems like in a year from now, the situation, every, the situation so could be different. so different. So, I don't, I don't think that I'm really, uh, uh, since we've got through these top chunk of guys like i'm not really adjusting all that much because it's a bummer because we've seen over the last two years these rookies come in and make such an immediate impact that that's what everybody's fiending for where i think we kind of knew coming into this that the top guys were mostly more of hall of very good rather than hall of famers yeah which i'm not upset about like well so people are salt there's nothing there's no one elite in this class right we're so salty at i that. mean there's they not i mean there's the really not elite. i mean Brees hall is borderline elite but yeah and, and kenneth walker regardless I mean, if there is or isn't like it's still a way to to add good pieces to the team and there are some really good players they just might not be quite elite players and i you know one thing about the fantasy community is like they get really snobby about the guys who aren't exactly like you're only going to have one or two elite guys on your team you need to be able to build your team with a bunch of hall of really good guys um and then some guys who can give you some spot starts here and there that's just how you have to build a depth unless you're playing with a bunch of jabrones and can you know just go get every good player possible like in reality you're probably only getting one or two great players on your roster um and this is a good way to, to improve getting better depth, but you may have to wait a year to see some of these guys really blossom into what we think they are. So it'll probably be more venom for those people who were already down on this class to be like, see, I told you this class sucks. So maybe there's a little bit of a down uh, stock marker ticker for, for some of these guys after you know the first couple of weeks, first half of the season. But I, I think there's still some really good guys here. Just we just talked about a bunch of them. Where hey, I don't love this quarterback situation, or hey, I don't love this landing spot, or hey, I don't love this. It's just like so much is going to change it's in even probably even by camp for some of these guys with injuries, and then quarterback wise, I think you know a lot of these teams could be. We don't know if it's Zach Wilson or not yet. I mean, so what you're saying is week eight or nine, send out some feeler offers. I, I think, I think so. And just the fact that don't get super discouraged that th- these guys are still really good and they might just not come out and just blow it up right away. Um, whereas that's kind of what we've been seeing for the last two years here. So well, what was a real, real big bummer about these top six guys is that none of them fell at all in the, in the draft. Whereas mock drafts had 
teams like Green Bay and Kansas City having shots at some of these guys. And if any of those guys would have went to that spot, that would have been enough to be like, oh, my God. Right. Yeah. But yeah. every all these teams just jumped up and took these dudes in the top 18 picks. Right. And they never had a chance to get to any good team. And so there's a bunch of bad landing spots because the, the draft, the NFL told us what they thought about this wide receiver class. They fucking like it. And you're telling me there's not anybody elite in a group of f- six guys that go top 18? Like, no, none of them boys are going to be elite? There's, there's a chance of, that, one, that two two of them could be. Which two it will be, I don't know. Maybe it's not the one. It could be Jamison Williams and Burks. could be Garrett Wilson and Olave. I don't know. could be any of them. Well, should, should we move on? Yeah, I mean, To the Burks, man of the hour, Burks Traylon? Is, is the last kind of group in the first round. He goes to Tennessee. I think it's a fantastic landing spot because they obviously ship out A.J. Brown to the Eagles. Yeah. And we'll talk about some of these veteran guys in later episodes, um, but we're going to kind of just focus on rookies today. Um, you're, there's no target competition. Kind of run run first offense where a guy that you can kind of scheme into some touches here and do a bunch of different things with Burks, which is kind of what we wanted him to be and, and, and what we wanted to see kind of happen with him and also a guy who can take the top off of an offense and isn't going to need to be uh, the most refined guy right off the rip to be a contributor uh, pretty hot and heavy right away. And he just seems to fit the mold and identity of this team as well. Like they they drafted for fit, scheme, and kind of seemingly personality. Yeah, I think he left and landed in a great spot with them shipping out A.J. Brown. Um, Like you said, He's not, he's fighting Robert Woods There's coming off an ACL injury and Achilles I think was yeah some uh, I thought it was I thought Maybe it was, it was an, ACL. an ACL it was an ACL and he was and and Nick Westbrook Akeen and yeah and another rookie Kyle Phillips yeah not and who, you know who yeah. else Josh is there Reynolds? No, no Josh, Josh Reynolds, Reynolds in Detroit. Detroit right yeah I mean ACL the, <clears throat> for Woods we were on the Fancy Authority live show the other night and and. Kevin Steele was trying to say, you know, A.J. Brown never got that much volume and they don't throw it that much and he didn't really like the landing spot. I I don't I, I can't agree with that. I mean, I, A.J. Brown was always banged up. He never played more than 13 games. The target share wasn't spectacular, but there was some games where he was decoying it up out there and he's completely gone and they have no one else to throw it. They brought in Austin Hooper. Like, who else is, you know, what? And Tannehill's not the worst, regardless of what you think about him. He can distribute to a guy. Again, like can, but Tannehill might not – they have an out after this year where they can get out of him. Sure. Which well, I, don't, I don't dislike Tannehill. I think the spot's good. Like, I think it's a great spot. Like, I, yeah. that's, a, that's a guy I liked and a spot I like, and he's my wide receiver one. Yep. Yep. No, I didn't move him at all. He's still one for me. All right. So you guys I, I, would yeah. take him first over – Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to discount 10 draft slots. That's nothing for right. me. Yeah. Right. No, oh, he got picked sixth. I don't, I don't. I don't give a shit. He still went. He still went the top right ish, the middle of the round one. I'm not moving right. him down no, because if he goes to Green Bay, that would have been stellar. Oh, you, for you sure. Know, everybody yeah. would be slobbering over him. But you know, at least Tennessee leaves a little bit of meat on the bone for some people not liking it, like you just mentioned. Um, but I, I do think it's a. I do think it's a good spot. And and just to put a kind of bow on that of of uh, on the AJ Brown thing, and people are like that was a terrible trade, and it's like well. They got back more than they ever paid for him. They don't have to pay him, and they got somebody who's similar. 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 Nobody could. He doesn't have to. And that was the other argument: is like he's not AJ Brown. It's like he doesn't have to be AJ Brown. If no, he was AJ exactly. Brown, he'd be the, the a top five dynasty startup. Yeah, exactly. I bet if AJ Brown played all those fucking games and didn't have rickety ass knees, they probably would have paid him and not traded him. But like, <laughs> exactly. There's there's some concern there. Like I love AJ Brown. I love watching him play. He's so much fun to watch out there. He can turn the little one into the big one in a hurry, and just just really really fun. Doesn't player need to much watch, but to get a lot. When you're not practicing a whole lot, and you've you've had your Never both your practices, meniscus right? basically removed, and it's like it's, that, that's just that that's a little bit of cause for pause. For yeah, me. what did he have? He got like food poisoning from eating like some fast food. Was it this past yeah, year? Yeah, I, 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 I don't even know. I yeah. don't even know. He's his a, knee got food poisoning. That's a different one. <laughs> yeah, his knee's getting all kind of stuff. So Burks for me is still stays in that top category. I think for me, like I said, we're, we're kind of through this first round now, and most of those guys were kind of the guys that everybody had jumbled up in some way. It's 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 still pretty much the same. It's it's Burks, Drake, Wilson, Jameson. I had probably Pickens up in there with Jameson, but I would almost put Jameson kind of by himself, and then I would maybe slide Pickens down one, 
and then go Pickens, Olave, Sky Moore, who we haven't gotten to. And um, I could probably throw Dotson still on. He was in that tier for sure. I could probably throw Dotson on the, on the end of that tier um, and, and feel okay about it. I have the top five. I have the, I have the top five guys. I have the five first round draft picks minus Dotson in tier by themselves. Okay. Jay Wayne? I think I think I got the top three is tier one. Jameson. I, I guess you could I could almost be down with squeezing Jameson into that top tier. I would just put probably take him at the end, I guess, for whatever reason. Although he could be the best one and he could be the most valuable one. I mean I mean th- pretty quickly. At, at this time last year we were saying Chris Olave could have been the first could have been was right. he he was he was in the thought process with Jamar Chase last year where he's mm-hmm. like he could have been the first wide receiver off the board if he would have left and now he's now he's and he still is for some people yeah some, um, some people are pretty hot and heavy on him still I, I I can't take him over some of these other guys but I know Riley Bymaster has him as a wide receiver one pre pre draft and I don't think he moves anywhere be, at, with that landing or moves no, too much uh, that landing if you spot. loved him there I don't think there's really any reason to yeah so you're taking Pickens still over. Olave, um, I I kind of I want to. I'm not I'm not sure yet. I haven't I haven't been put in that situation quite yet. I haven't thought about it enough. Initially, yes, for sure. And now, a little bit of pause and doubt. It seems like some of the red flag stuff was, you know, some dumb shit. Fake and then and then maybe. the the big one was maybe not even a real thing that that. So and lands in Pittsburgh, a lot of mouths to feed and a lot of things. But it's just a good organization. Uh, so they get I, wide receivers right. I guess I'm not. I don't know, man. That's as a, as a TBD. I'll be interested. We'll, we'll get a mock going here this week, um, and that'll kind of be the first time that I'll probably pro- really really process that. But uh, for now, it's definitely closer than it was. Fair. Yeah. Well, I I, I don't know what to do. I think I would st- still take Pickens. I think I think the next couple guys come into play here. You want to move on to the second yep. round? Let's First, though, if you guys want to cop this T-shirt, I'll throw a link up. Head over to RevelryBrewingCo.com yeah. and uh, help your boys out by getting one of these soft, fresh. Yeah, if you've been a fan of the show for a while tees. and don't want to be a Patreon or anything like that, the way to support is, is grabbing a fresh fresh T-shirt. Not only you... Uh, it's not, so soft. Not Cam, only can, are you, Cam confirmed the softness. It's so soft. Not only can you support your guys, but you can, you know, maybe, what's the FF Dynasty? Oh. Uh, no one wants to tell anyone about us. That's the problem. My physical therapist, uh, I was working on my knee, and, and I told him about it, and he started watching the show, and every time I go in, we're talking about it. He's got a, he's his first Dynasty coming up in May. Shout out to Zach. Uh, and and he's like, yeah, I, I can't tell my league mates about <laughs> you. I want to. I'm like, nah, I get it, man. And honestly, like, they should find us if they're looking. But <laughs> if you search for Dynasty Fantasy Football, you'll find us. So come on in. If you search in. it, they will come. Come on in. All right. So the top of the second round, Christian Watson goes to Green Bay. They, Green, Bay <laughs> Green Bay sticks to their guns and does not uh, go first round. There was some reports that they were trying to trade up to get Burks. They did um, move up, though. They and did to move get Watson. Up. And they moved up to get Watson. And he's the first receiver off the board here. And I think... Um, I mean, some people may have may have, you know. I'm I'm assuming most people are probably drafting drafting him over Dotson at at this point. Consider me in that camp. Okay. Uh, well, let's get to it. Where Where is Christian Watson now falling for you guys uh, in in that group of guys that we just talked about? I have him second in the second tier. Okay. So with who? With more Pickens and Dotson. Okay. Jay Wayne. I think he's definitely got to be in the discussion with. With the tier two guys, I mean, he ha- yeah, I don't, I, I, just on landing spot alone, he has to be, regardless of what you think about the player. Landing spot, quarterback situation, the organization, coaching staff, scheme, I love all of that shit. Um, granted, Aaron Rodgers could be out of there next year. I mean, I don't know, and it probably isn't gonna. I can't see how it's immediately gonna be amazing. So I think people are probably gonna overdraft this guy and then be a little disappointed when he doesn't come out right away and crush he's raw he's a raw guy he hasn't doesn't have a ton of catches on his resume like he's it's gonna and you gotta get into the the friendship circle of trust with Aaron Rodgers and you gotta I don't know what you gotta do to get in there you probably don't want to know that answer but like you got to do something to make Aaron Rodgers like you and and I think you have to watch the the Divergent series (laughs) yeah 
follow. Listen, you got to follow my wife on Twitter. He's not married. They're engaged. They're engaged. They, they called it off. Uh, I don't know did they? I don't know if it's back on or not. Uh, uh, how the fuck do you know that shit? <laughs> Most the you the, the the things this man knows that don't mean anything or matter is boundless. That's unfortunate. I know. What could he do? <laughs> He's like a beautiful mind for dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, Christian Watson probably isn't gonna end up on any of my teams. He's he was already going fringe first round, and now I think he's cemented him climbing that ladder a little more. You guys probably like him a little more than me. I mean, I might still take Jahan Dotson over him. I actually, I, I would take Jahan Dotson over him. Um, I get it. He's in Green Bay. He's 6'4 and a freak. But outside of that, like, again, not a whole lot of tape I could sink my teeth into. I'm going off of words at the Senior Bowl that he was great and that, you know, yeah, he had a good uh, dominator or whatever target share because they never threw the ball. And when they did, they threw it to that 6'4 really fast guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he had a dominator in the 90 percentile, but yeah, it was he had only for 43 right. receptions right. or something. So. Yeah. So it's you know I get it. There's the, you got the draft capital. It's good. It's to the Packers. You like the landing spot. Um, just just for me, it's like when's the last time Rodgers has been excited about a rookie? I mean, even a guy at Devontae Adams who was just the guy took a, a few years to really blossom into the guy. Not only did it take years for him to blossom into that guy, it took. Like, Devontae Adams was a guy who set the FBS record for receptions and was a much more polished player coming in than Christian Watson was. And, you know, like, I don't know nothing about Christian Watson except for that he's fast and tall. Like, and he had a really, he had a, one of the highest drop percentages at 13%. Like, Rodgers is not going to be down with that shit. If you're, not, if you're not polished being where you're supposed to be and catching the ball, I don't give a fuck where you drafted him. Rodgers is going to be like, nah, we're going to play whoever the fuck they took in the fourth round or the seventh round. Like, if that guy's being where he's going to be, like, I'm not saying like I'm not meaning to shit on Christian Watson. I I initially did like Christian Watson mostly because of the shot that you could take and the upside. But I can't just go into the you know middle first round and just draft a guy completely on upside that I'm just, really just don't know anything about. And and just because he's tied to Aaron Rodgers, it's like I mean I know he has got a lot more draft capital than MVS, but I mean maybe he's just MVS. MVS, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, MVS is fine professional football wise, but fantasy wise, good luck predicting when that's gonna yeah. work out for you. Yeah. Well, it's just does he come down with that forty yard catch, and is it a touch? Is it in the end zone? When right. He, when I feel like caught? he has like, he has more to his game than MVS did. I, I I would say so. I mean, he's a you know second borderline round first pick. round high second round pick. I'm not sure where MVS went, but I think he was nowhere near that. He was late, yeah, fourth or fifth, yeah. All in boys. Um, I'm just and. J I'm just Jamon saying, Moore like, or whatever. you know, Shout out Jamon I'm, Moore. I'm, I'm a little more uh, pessimistic about, about this than, than jumping right in and being like, oh, he's Rogers going to make him into a star right away. I mean, and you're also getting a little bit more of a, like, you're getting crankier and crankier Aaron Rodgers, not nicer and nicer Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he's not aging like a fine wine. Well, yeah, he just broke you, off his engagement. That, what do you expect? <laughs> that guy starts fucking up and he's going to be like, Guna Kuntz a fucking gen. He just couldn't have fucking done what I wanted him to. I got Christian Gunther fucking Gunst. Watson out here. Uh, so, yeah, I'm probably going to be missing out on Christian Watson. Marquez was a fifth-round pick. NBS. Right. He was, he was very a similar looking profile. In terms of size, uh, and height, maybe weight, maybe speed. maybe that really works out for everybody that takes him, and, and I'm I'm probably just going to be a guy that I that I miss on. He's and, one of those guys you're okay being wrong about, right? And next year, if he does hit, like I'll 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 pony up the dough to, to get him in a startup. So, um, any any other thoughts here? I think we I think we covered Watson I'd, pretty I'd, well there. You know, I'd I'd put Sky Moore, Pickens, Olave, Dotson, kind of probably in a in a group together there, and then I'd probably put Watson. Right on the other side of that. You're not even putting him in that tier? He's no. not in the same tier? The no. Disrespect, oh, man. No. So disrespectful. No. Shout out Stephen A. Smith. Double hate. <laughs> Loathe entirely. Hate, hate, hate. Um, so let's keep it moving. Wandell Robinson is the next guy off the board of the G-Men. Moving on. No, you're out on Wandell. No, what? He's the if same thing as Tony. Except maybe he's not like Tony. Tony's just... Tony could be great if, if Tony gets in there and actually dedicates himself to the craft and maybe finds Jesus, you know, 
maybe Tony could be great, but you know, we've already, we've already seen a little saga playing out between them. Like, Hey, Jesus, are we playing La Buddha, any of them. I'm fine with we yeah, playing, Krishna. We, we play in mind games here and saying, Hey, we're trying to trade you or get the fucking voluntary camp here or not. Like, I mean, uh, but what are you still have other players there still too? You still have Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard's he's coming. He Darius is coming Slayton. off of Achilles and he's you like thirty. Still have um, you have Slayton who who gives a fuck? The you have Kenny, Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay, yeah. You have Kenny Galladay and you have Kadarius Tony. Both were big buys for me in the off season. I I put those guys. Nobody wants them. They're, well, Tony a little bit, but definitely nobody likes Galladay anymore. Yeah, I was I was big on those guys. But if Wandell can come in and, and kind of. Wiggle his way into being a chain mover for for the the Reds for Redskins for the Giants, uh, you know I I don't really have a problem with him and I don't know I mean maybe some people will get called I wouldn't take him in the first round of a rookie draft, but after you get so far in you know mid second, high second in a, in a one QB league high second. Why are you so quick to dismiss? I just don't like the landing spot. Do you like the game? Of it's fun Wando. Take. Oh, I mean, it's fine. I was like, what are you talking about? Do you about? like football? No, I hate it. <laughs> I thought we were talking about football. Yeah, football, yeah. Fantasy football. I, yeah, I have the. Uh, the anyways. American um, football. Um, I'm, he's fine. I just, he's just, he's just, again, the, we're in the hall of very good. I mean, he's, again, he's a player who's a bit raw as well, too. Mm-hmm. Um, he transferred from Nebraska to uh, Kentucky. Kentucky, yep. Just missed out. Just, I don't really know. He had a great season last year with a lot uh, of fun to watch, man. Yeah, really tough. He plays is bigger than his size. He does play big for his size. Crushes it down the middle. Shout uh, out Will Levis. Um, shout out Jay Mike. I know he's a big Wandell guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jay Loves Mike. Him. Yep. Is he biased because he's a Kentucky guy, right? Yes, yeah, he's yeah. a big Kentucky guy. Shout out Benny Snow. Um, Benny. I, 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 I would be I would I would be fine with taking Wondell Robinson, you know, high second in a in a in a one quarterback and then mid mid second. In he's a, in the third tier for me. He's fine. I, I would probably take him in the middle second. Not okay. Would the, you Would you take him over Mechie, who is the next guy who came off the board? Yes. I think I got to take Mechie. I think I would have to take Mechie too. I liked Mechie, and then when the NFL said that they like Mechie too, I was like, oh shit. So Confirmation see, they bias. They didn't fucking sleep on Mechie just because yeah. he's hurt, like like everyone else is. Has I didn't like. I don't care about the injury. I didn't care for the game. Yeah, Me- Mechie is gonna. I don't. I don't know if this will will get his name in more people's mouths or not. It just still doesn't seem like really anybody cared all that much. So I, I hope it, it kind of stays down, and you can get him at the end of the second, top of the third. Because if that's the that's why I really really liked him because I felt like that was just a good guy who could he come in there and steal, just and now he's probably get not you a nice steal. PPR floor. It's properly um, rated now. Probably. I think that's fine. I think I think Mechie at the late second is late second early third is fine with me. So I'm, I'm going to be intrigued to see where that stock goes from here. I think it's higher than that though. I think he's probably an early second guy now. Okay, and and super flex or non super flex? Non super flex. Okay. Nah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, well, because Superflex, I think you're going to just get a, a bunch of quarterbacks at the top of the second probably yeah. running Mid-second, off the board. It'll push some other players down yeah. into the third. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So, so Thornton, next guy off the board, New England drafted him. We can pretty much skip him because it doesn't matter who they drafted. That guy I mean, was Harry. a bust. I mean, I think that I think that New England needed to get speed and they right. got speed, but what else did they get? This is this was this is kind of my Olave take where I I, I think that he's going to be a better professional player than maybe fantasy player. I think Thornton could help them be a speed guy, get get down the field, open some stuff up. But I'm not all that. It certainly it certainly likes me lets me like Jacoby Myers. Yeah, and and Kendrick Bourne quietly had a great season last year. Devontae um, Parker, and they brought in Parker, so you know. Thornton could be – it just seems like a quite a reach uh, for the Patriots yeah. to be up that high with him. Especially um, Trade it up the, for him. Especially with the next guy off the board. So Pickens goes next. We're, we're pretty big Pickens guys. But, uh, yep. He was my – You yeah. as well. Yep, yep. Where did you have him pre-draft? Uh, like two, two, two or three. Two or three. Yeah. Damn. He, he was right there with James Williams. Williams. All right. So where where does where did he end up? He fell down. You? He fell down for me a little bit um, because of the fall because, in the draft. And not not so much the fall of the draft is just that there's obviously some competition for targets there. But 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 those dudes are not going to be there that long, right? I mean, unless they unless they uh, extend them, I think they're both like Chase might have one extra year. Yeah. But Deontay is a free agent after this season, I believe, and I'll, I'll effort that. But I don't think that the 
they're both not going to be there next year if I had to bet. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Tell me if that affects what you're thinking at all. A little bit. A little bit. I would move him up. I had him initially when I did this the first time. I had him behind Watson, but I, or I had him ahead of Watson. And I moved him behind Watson because of the immediate. I feel like I can get more immediately from him. But the, Yeah, this is, this is Deontay Johnson's. This is a contract year for him. Okay. And then I think Chase I think Claypool has 24. one more year. Yeah, I think he's got 24. Because he was he's still on his rookie deal, but not. <clears throat> yeah, he, he's he's unrestricted in 24. So he, he But again, with Pickens, you're, you're having issues with injury history. Is he a bit of a head case? I love 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 we saw on the field, though, especially. Good yeah. landing spot for head cases, though. Shout out to Antonio good landing, Brown. Yeah, good landing spot for anybody who who might have been fucking up a little bit. Nice kind of family style organization that seems to keep. Yeah, if your brother's in eligible to be drafted, they'll take him. Yeah. So you feel yeah. comfortable? They have four sets of brothers on that team. Four? Who's the four sets of brothers? I don't know. It was on the NFL draft. Okay, I can think of three, but I couldn't Hayward think of... and Watts. 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 I can't. And then they took. Uh... It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's still straight facts. Though. Um, yeah, Pickens, family environment. I love the landing spot for Pickens, but it is it could be a, you know a little murky there for a minute. But I could you know I could see him emerging as an alpha and being just the fucking for guy. For sure, it yeah. Does it, still ben, good draft capital though? Right? Ben, yeah, drink, nope, yeah. No, don't hate the yeah, Ben not at all. couldn't quite take advantage of Claypool, and Claypool sometimes fumbled some advantages that he would have. Now yeah, Deontay so Johnson balls. did that plenty, but still got plenty of balls. Um, so many so, deep balls that. Claypool almost came down with. It seems like there's just there's a lot going on over there. They also added uh, the guy from Memphis, uh, Calvin, Calvin Austin. Austin. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't he didn't really affect me for Pickens necessarily, no. but um, you know if Deontay Johnson stays around and if for some reason Claypool stays around, then it's just a weird room. But I can't see both of those guys staying. But it might be a year before you really start seeing, or it could be two even if they bring back Deontay and. Uh, but you know you got. Pickens there with or Pickett and Pickens there. You got Pickett there with Matt Canada, who he's kind of familiar with from his pit days. Um, so, you know, that offense could take shape a little faster and, and maybe can faci- facilitate a little bit more of a downfield attack that wasn't there before. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I mean, you could have put with one of the three of us playing there and we'd have more of a downfield attack right. with Big Ben. And, and I know Canada wants to have that RPO style game and what he does. And Ben wanted nothing fucking to do with that. And there was a, there was seemed to be a, a impasse and, and always a power struggle there. Has so. Ben ever liked his fucking offensive coordinator? I mean, Jesus I mean, Christ! Yeah, I, think, I, think I think he liked Arian. I think he liked Arians yeah. at one oh, point. Sure. Okay, years ago, sure. right? Well, so fair. Pickens, uh, he that, good he, riddance, Ben Roethlisberger. He, See you. He peace. dropped out of the tier of Jameson down to yeah. with those other guys for me, and Jameson is kind of sitting by himself. I think he's. I think him and Watson are. I could go either way with either of those. Okay. Pickens or Watson. Yeah. Um, so let's fair. let's jump to the next guy, Alex Pierce. He went to Indy. Alec. Alec. Sorry. Yeah. yeah you're right. Get his name you're right. right. You're right. Um, Son of a bitch. So this is maybe one of the bigger surprises. I knew that he would get some pretty good capital, but you know, I could have. I would have rather seen the Colts take Sky more. Let's say, you know, than Alec Pierce. Seems like almost a little bit of sort of the same kind of guy as Pittman in some ways. I think he's got a little more. I think he's a little more. Juice. A little more. Yep. Yep. Because I was going to say juice. Exactly. Daddy juice. That's what my daughter calls beer. So where does did Alec Pierce jump in into any of those tiers for you guys? No, I mean, not. Really. I was already pretty intrigued with Pierce. I like taking him in like the third round because he's he was in like te- a, yeah. a second round Christian Watson or a first right. round third. James yeah, Williams. that was my thoughts on him. Was hey, but now you got to take him in the second round. You're getting you that six up. four, six three speed guy, kind of like Christian Watson was. Hopefully, in the second round that I was getting in the beginning of this whole deal, and he Pierce was kind of the third round guy the version of that. And All three of those guys moved up like three fourths of a round basically right because jameson went from the being mid to late first now to being early first watson went from being second mid se- mid to early second up into probably late first and then alec pierce went from early third probably to mid second so Wan- wandell or pierce let me get pierce man the one yeah. is so small is that is that a sizest yeah comment? sizes is that wrong mm. Hope your daughters aren't small. I just hope they grow up healthy. Mechie or, or Pierce then for you? I know you're you're gonna go Pierce. So Cause yeah, because you, you hate Mechie. I don't game. hate Mech. I didn't. I didn't care for it. I didn't care for it. 
<laughs> it wasn't hate, hate, hate. I did not loathe. I just <laughs> didn't care for it. Don't let the liberal media tell you how to think and feel. You won't. You won't let them do it. I won't. Can't. Um, I, I get. Hmm. Met you, your peers. I didn't think this was going to be a question I was going to have to answer. So, I, I guess for right now, for off the rip, I, I think I would. I think I might might go with Pierce, but I, I think I, I think I like Mechie. In my defense, I wrote Mechie down first. I like. But I Mechie. think now they're talking about. It, I think I'd take Pierce. I like Mechie more than Pierce, but Indy's so thirsty for for another guy. We want yeah. we wanted to be Paris Boys Campbell. I wanted to be Paris Campbell for a long time. When he's on the field, he's pretty good. What about Ashton Doolin? Sure. I mean, give me give me the dart throws of of Ashton and uh, Mike Strakan for sure. Stretching. Those are guys that are Release on my taxi squad in every single league, just about both of them. That's a great fantasy team name. For um, real, real deep cut. I don't know it. how they pronounce it. though. I don't know either. But is it Strachan or Strachan or Strachan? It's probably it irrelevant. I now. think it's Str- Strachan. It's maybe Alec doesn't matter. So, Pierce. so you're everybody's kind of moved Alec Pierce up a little bit. Got it. Seems. You, you have, have to. to look um, how high they took him in there. Took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. Good job, sound guy. Um, Sky Moore. Well, you just changed all this up on me. How we feel about Sky? Did it's a, oh, I found it. It's actually you pronounce it Mike Strawn. Strawn. S T R A W N. How does Mike Strach pronounce his name? His last name is pronounced Strawn. Mm, the things you learn. What? The C H is silent. Don't let the liberal media <laughs> tell you how to think and pronounce. I things. mean, that was from IndyStar.com. So I've seen Strachan on that jersey. It's Strachan. I'm a brunette. There's no way. This is a this is a pecan pecan. C H is silent. Wait, sidebar: Are we on pecan or pecan? It I'm depends going, on what I'm you're going calling. Pe- I'm going pecan. It's it's butter pecan, but it's pecan pie. So it depends on what you're saying. It's saying. just pecan. I think you're probably pecan right, it's pie. Pe- it's pecan pie sounds like you're pecan. That's asshole. what truckers use. You pee in a can, by the <laughs> Tell you what. Yeah, it's it- pecan and it's <laughs> pecan. There's, there's no way the C H is silent. That's some wild shit. All right, let's get this guy more here. So he's probably being taken over all of those guys that we just mentioned for me. <laughs> yep. Every single one of them after Burks for Correct. me. Correct. So he's he's next? The first guy that got the God landing spot, you know, <laughs> that, that everybody yeah. was wanting. Yeah. Um, Juju, I think, is only on a one-year deal. Kelsey's 100. <laughs> and MBS. I, th- I think uh, MBS like, and him are completely MBS different and, games. Uh, the, 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 the guy who they moved up with a couple years ago it's in the Nicole second round. Miko Hardman. Hardman gives me more like, Mikol, more like Miko Soft Man. Is he out of there next year? So um, I think uh, Sky Moore's got to go. He's ahead of Christian Watson for me for sure. And I think some people would probably have him as the wide receiver one or two. If they were if you were in the Sky Moore camp before uh, as wide receiver one or two, it's no, certainly I don't think anyone has. I don't. Oh, think. there is absolutely out there. There's whom I I could probably dig up some twitter rankings right that now. is wild now you're very strongly sky more over christian watson was there yeah. that much more sky more that you i mean i yeah, like christian sure. watson there's there's a hundred more catches in a season i like, like i was big on what not I'm, that many i prefer watson more than casey does and i have more of a Watson too. That's that's a guy in Sky Moore who moved around, played all the different positions. Was was a D back. He looks great on the field. He can beat you short or intermediate. High school high quarterback. High school quarterback. Like hasn't even been at the position all that long, and then showed you time after time. He's got multiple different ways to win. Good hands. Like I, great. I, and re- he plays inside out. Sky Moore is what people want Jahan Dotson to be. I mean, I I, I got him liking both kind of pretty similarly, um, but. I was giving the edge to Dotson. I think I got to give the edge to Moore. Uh, you have at to. this point post draft, because but the same tier for me. Spot I have him in the same tier too, just on the opposite ends of the tier. Okay. So tell me, I don't hate Jahan Dotson. I just he's not. I don't. He's not. I don't like him as much as other people do. Yeah. It almost seems too good to be true with Sky Moore. I haven't heard that argument before. Mm. It's too good to be true. <laughs> no. God landing spot, you know. What do you think? I mean, I, I can't be mad at wherever you want to take him. I mean, it's just where are you, fun, are you taking him Christian Watson spot. or are you taking Sky Moore? I don't know. Probably Christian Watson, but I don't know why. Nope, take it Sky Moore. Act, if I could actually want to think I about can this, feel it I, down in my plums. <laughs> I might have more in a tier of his own. It, where? Uh, Above after, all those guys? Yeah. Tier two of his own? Yeah. 
Yeah. Because of Patrick Mahomes? Yes. All right. Aaron Rodgers is a lot older than Patrick Mahomes. So he's definitely going to be stuck with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, would you Mahomes rather have would you rather have 2 years of Rodgers and then Jordan Love? You yeah, love Jordan, Jordan, Jordan Love. No. He'll be out of there. No. No one loves Love. I like what the Packers do though. I trust the Packers, so I'm, I'm I mean, fine I tr- with Watson. I trust the Chiefs though too. But I can't be that. I can't really argue against Sky Moore. I have no arguments against them. So, bit of a hater on Sky, it seems. I said got, I can't, got the room can't hater argue. Here. Uh, all right, so Vilas Jones goes next. I mean, he's there's there's probably the next two guys after him, Tolbert and Bell, are probably going to go ahead of him in uh, startups or uh, rookie drafts. And Bell, 100%. Um, you know, I don't know, Bell and, and Tolbert, I would assume most people would take Bell over Tolbert, but Tolbert's got uh, some of the size speed guys maybe, you know, a little more interested. Well, yeah. well as it seems like kind of weird because it's like that's kind of probably the analytical guys plucked Tolbert out for – a different reason than you would You want to talk, talk about Dominator rating. Well, that's Ooh, what, sheesh. And, well, and, and you picked Bell out, but they're kind of opposite ends of the spectrum, but both yeah. kind of doing the same thing maybe analytically. I could have that wrong, but like Bell's a kind of a darling in their sense because doesn't have the size, doesn't have the speed and, the, the, and, that, and that sort of score, but yeah. Dominator and target share and, and all those kind of things are, are really, really Breakout strong. Age. Breakout age. really strong for Bell. Um, so... Velas Jones only had a dominator in the 29th percentile. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah, why don't I get that? And he's also, like you know, a lot of people go old. to college for seven years. <laughs> His breakout age, oh my God. What I've is never, it? It's not even ranked. It's yeah, like he doesn't have one. 24.3. Yeah, that's this past year. So he's the guy that the NFL he was. He can't be any good. He's the guy that the NFL was probably a little higher on than any fantasy circles. I heard him a lot of times on the bigger draft podcasts of liking him kind of around in this third, fourth round. Um, of a guy who could be a, a, a Debo Samuel type of guy, which is the you know the the key phrase of of the draft, um, where you know a little bit of running back in the story sort of is that Poles and and Fields sat down together and watched some tape, and you know Velas was the guy that they wanted to be able to target in that in that range of where they had a pick. Um, so you know, hey, I, I'm down with it, but I mean, I'll, Velas has got to be you know end of the third round guy. Yeah, yep, yep. Whereas Tolbert. Fine with taking a swing on good landing spot in Dallas, um, and and you know a pretty good specimen, um, and, and has a lot of abilities that you like to see. And then David Bell, probably the highest out of any of those guys for me. I'm I'm I'd be right in there mid second uh, for David Bell, and and don't feel bad about. It. I mean he went from being like just the third round about to end, and everybody being like, oh David Bell, to oh shit David Bell just landed in a spot with a top five fucking quarterback. And Amari Cooper really being only the real other guy. I mean, I like DPJ just fine. And I like uh, Joku. I like Joku. And I like uh, Anthony, Harrison Bryant. Anthony and, Schwartz. And it, I mean, whatever. Th- I guess they kind of like him. So whatever. Um, but uh, David Bell, I feel like really just put himself into a really good position here to, to, play to Jarvis slot. Landry this yep. thing. Yep. Yep. Uh, right into some, some nice fantasy points. Agreed. Love that. Any, so any 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 anybody else you guys want to touch on before we move over to the running back side of things? I don't want to get you know too crazy here. Um, I liked Ezekonma, and then okay. we talked with him. A little he went bit. to Miami. Yeah, I mean he's going to be the wide receiver three there, but he should be he should. Steady Wilson going to be the wide receiver three there. Not worried about that. he plays a different than Wilson does. Okay, I don't really know anything about him, so floor is yours. Should play the slot there. I think he's going to could could do well over the middle. He can play the outside as well too. Um, tough guy. He's in the same. He's in that same toughness category with Wandale. Okay, size. Uh, I think he's about six two, six three. Okay, a little bigger, a little bigger than Wandale. Uh, any anybody else you want? I mean, Calvin Austin went to Pittsburgh, which was a guy that was kind of you got into that third round. I was always checking in those mocks. All right, if Calvin Austin's still there, he'll, he'll be the pick I take because I I like things about him. Just again, smaller guy. Um, I think Calvin Austin's going to be the primary punt returner and kick returner for the Steelers. I would assume that's what he'll start off being. Yeah. And maybe he can work his they way lost into their, something. They lost right. their punt returner. Right. Ray, to the, shout, out to Ray, the shout out Ray Ray McLeod. He's a con with six, two, two Oh six. So, so yeah. And then green Bay takes two more shots on wide receivers, which are, you know, Hey, those are going to be guys that are going to be all of a sudden where nobody's who are going to be targeted in probably just about every fourth round or last round of every rookie uh, startup, I would assume. Yeah, that, I think Dubs is interesting as a deep threat, but it's Dubs. Dubs. Man, I wish it was Dubs. <laughs> Sorry, it's be Dubs and Strawn. Dubs. 
Uh, Shakir goes to Buffalo. I know a lot of people liked him as a kind of a sleeper. That's not the worst landing spot for yeah, a wide receiver. Play the slot there, yeah. And then, well, cra- eventually after Crowder eventually, leaves, after Crowder leaves, <laughs> or or gets hurt week two. Yeah, sure. The hamstring will just flare up. <laughs> uh, and then Kyle Phillips was another guy that people uh, had some had some love for and goes to Tennessee. So yeah, that's that's a nice. Seems like that could be a a stab that starts getting taken a decent yeah. amount later in, in drafts. Saw some other people, some other people as well with Bo Melton as well. Yeah. Had a nice combine. Did, it, did you guys, the real one, the real weird one, did, you, did Justin Ross sign anywhere? I haven't, I haven't seen, seen that he signed anywhere yet, but yeah, he, he went undrafted, which was pretty surprising. And that, I, heard, I heard his neck medical was just bad. Yeah. I mean, he made it through a whole season, so, but. All right, well, let's take a quick break and switch over to the running back side of this. Let's do it. Hey, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, though. Let me Subby. Get that. Subby, scribey, leave a comment, let us know where we messed up, who you like, who you don't like. <clears throat> Go over to revelrybrewingco.com, get the t-shirt. Appreciate y'all. Patreon.com, FF Dynasty, $5 holler. Peace. <laughs>